Hi Year 11, this video is designed to help you with understanding the patterns that you see in a community of organisms in a particular um, ecological region. So um, when we're talking about a community, please remember we're talking about all of the living things in a um, area. So for example, if we're talking about the New Zealand bush, we're talking about the plants, we're talking about the animals, we're talking about um, the, the, the animals that are herbivores of those plant species or carnivores or omnivores, the relationships between all of those living things. And when we're looking at a pattern, we're looking at um, how those living things are organized or appear within that particular habitat. And there are three patterns that are particularly of note, zonation, stratification and succession. Now, remember, as I've said, that a community is your group of populations of all the various living things that live in that same area. Got to get our definitions right. It's a big deal in bio. And when we're talking about our ecological levels, you can see where that community of living things is going to sit um, within in that hierarchy from down at the level of one organism to a population. Then you have your community and then you have that ecosystem. And that ecosystem is all of the biotic and abiotic factors. But that community is all of the living things of the different species that groups of populations in that same area. Now, we start talking about patterns, how those things manifest. So if you look at the diagram that you've got here, you have got a picture of a mountain and it's basically going from a low altitude, gradually going up and up and up to a higher altitude. So there will be a change in an abiotic factor or a number of abiotic factors as we go from down near sea level at the base of the mountain to the upper parts of that mountain. And what you'll see is that change in, that, in those abiotic factors. And in this case, it could very well be things like the exposure to wind or the amount of freely available water um, or the temperature ranges. All of those things are going to change as we get further up that mountain. What that will do is cause a change in the distribution of the species horizontally across that ecosystem. It happens because there's a change in an abiotic factor. And the example that I've given you there is that change in altitude. OK, and what you go is you go from a dense um, forest. Gradually, you get different types of plants basically becoming more and more apparent. Um, and the reasoning behind that is the change in abiotic factors means that the adaptations that you would need to be able to survive and thrive are going to be different in different parts of that ecosystem. OK, and therefore what's going to help a moss and lichen be successful near the top would not necessarily be anywhere near as successful down in that deciduous tree forest layer. So that zonation results because of a change in an abiotic factor. Don't confuse zonation with stratification. OK, so when we talk about stratification, we're talking about a change in distribution vertically down the ecosystem. And it happens because, again, there's going to be a change in the abiotic factor in the ecosystem. So take a look at the diagram at the top end of it. You are going to see yourselves some really, really high, tall, tall trees. And the consequence of that means that if you're at that top of that emergent layer, you've got a massive amount of light exposure to you. As you get further and further down, you are going to have more trees in that canopy layer and underneath that in the understory layer, there'll be even more trees. When we get to the forest layer, there's barely any light getting down. And so the abiotic factor that changes from the emergent layer to the forest floor is a decrease in light in the forest. And that will have an impact again on the type of organisms, the type of um, life that is going to be able to survive and thrive at different places. Different adaptations will offer you different advantages. And as a result of that, um, you end up with this stratification becoming apparent. Our third type of community pattern is succession. Now, succession is a change in the community that happens over time. And you have to think of an environment as a dynamic environment, one that is changing due to the environmental conditions changing over time. The biotic and the abiotic factors are rarely static. As human beings, our perception can be that the environment stays the same for the entirety of our lives or will be this way forever. And frankly, that's broadly a nonsense. Um, what you'll see in any environment is over time, the organisms that are present in it change it and the environmental conditions can be changed by that to mean that the entire thing shifts. 
The best example I can give you is Rangatoto Island. Okay, so if we think about Rangatoto Island, which uh, for those of you who don't know, is a large volcanic island um, off, Harak off the Haraki Gulf, um, it erupts 400 years ago, four 500 years ago, and is barren rock. There is no life on it. It's newly erupted. The lava cools, you end up with these basaltic flows, and they have a whole bunch of bare rock. Over time, you'll have things like mosses and lichens being the first things that can actually survive on that bare rock. But they in themselves begin to break down that rock with their chemical secretions. Um, that leads to the beginnings of the formations of like very simple soils. And they are then later colonized as winds blow in seeds from over the Iraqi Gulf. They bring them in from the mainland. And then you have different plants being able to survive and thrive there. They again change the environment until when you jump forward 500 years later, you have not really those mosses and lichens being as, as, as they were, but you actually have some quite large trees now. So the environment be, has changed over time. The community has changed over time. And it's ha happened because of a shift in the biotic and the abiotic factors. Another example, um, go out and mow your lawn. Absolutely mow it down. Okay, it's strip everything off there and then go out there and pour salt over all of the soil. Okay, now wait about 15 years. Because what will gradually happen over that period of time is slowly but surely that field will be recolonized by other plant life. And you won't end up with a forest in two years, but you might end up with one in 30 or 40 as all the plant life begins to reestablish itself. And the abiotic and biotic factors begin to support the type of plant life that can survive in a um, in an older, more established forest. Then one then is simply going to be bare rock. OK, so the environmental conditions change over time and that pattern results in succession as different waves of plants and um, as different waves of plant life become established in that habitat over time. So if we look at the diagram that we've got in front of us here, what community pattern is being shown and what causes that pattern? And if you're looking at it, you've got this pond and it's going to gradually be filled up with sediment and organic matter. Right. And that will result in the pond becoming shallower and shallower and shallower. And that will result in it becoming a shallow pond and eventually a wetland. And then finally becoming solid ground. So we need to be thinking about what type of pattern is being shown there. And the answer is going to be broadly that succession. What causes that pattern? Well, that's going to be the buildup of sediment in that river over time. OK, there you go. Succession, accumulation of sediment leading to changes in the water and the air over time. OK, so if we look here, what community pattern is shown here and what causes that pattern? So take a look at it. You have got yourself some submerged plants and we've got dry land. And what we have here is a difference between the amount of water that these living things are being exposed to. So as we're moving up from one place to another place, we are getting that shift. So what that's going to lead to is a change in that environmental factor. Now, this is happening very similar to the mountain that we were looking at at the start. So I would argue that this is a form of zonation. Well, let's see. Boom, the zonation. Community pattern being shown shows that change in height at the lake edges, and that leads to a change in exposure of water to air. Right, probably the next one's going to be stratification. Let's find out. So if we look here, we've now got a third example. And in this case, this is very similar to the plant diagram with the tall plants and the short plants. It's in, in fact, it's the opposite of it. We have got this change in depth, this change in light intensity, but it's happening in one axis straight down. And for that reason and that reason alone, it's going to be an example of stratification. Let's talk about the abiotic factor that's changing here. The amount of light getting to the um, abyss pel apple pelagic zone, the deep, deep ocean, compared to the epipelagic zone, will be massively different. You'll get very, very large amounts of light comparatively here than you will down in this uh, abyssopelagic area down here. You will also end up with differences in pressure and the ability to survive that. But all in, that's going to be an example of stratification and there'll be changes in pressure and light and, I didn't mention it, but temperature. And that will mean that the pattern will lead to what we describe as stratification in the living things that are present there.